Now, in case you're wondering, this is not Disneyland. This is St. Basil's Cathedral in Moscow, Russia. And if you've been following my videos for quite some time, you would know that this is where I'm originally from. And if you haven't been following my videos for quite some time, this is what the subscribe button is for. Make sure you press it right now because it helps the channel, it's the algorithm, it makes me happy. So, as I was saying, I was born here, I spent most of my life here, I moved to Canada 14, 15 years ago. And now I'm back here visiting for a couple of months as I'm trying to avoid Canadian lockdowns. Um, and all of that brought back some great memories about the time when I spent four years working at the Hotshot Lawyer with the largest international law firm in the world, Baker McKenzie. They had an office in Moscow, still have an office in Moscow. And I used to do some high caliber work here for the biggest names you can think of. I've done work on Facebook, I've done work for Google. J.K. Rowling, DreamWorks, Nike. Again, like I said, if you think of a big name, I've probably done some IP work for them. And this video is going to be about a client that I was involved in a massive litigation file. I didn't do a lot of work on that file. I had a really small role in it, but I learned a lesson that I want to pass on to you as part of that litigation that took seven years, seven years. And uh, this is going to be a lesson about the importance of protecting your brand and what to do in the litigation and what it means for a business that is involved in a litigation like that. So let's go. I'm going to show you the client who had that, that problem. And I'm going to tell you everything you need to know about what they did to get their brand back. So, Starbucks. As you know, they've been around 50 years. It started in 1971. And in case you didn't know, I didn't know either until I checked Wikipedia. But as they grew and started to expand from Seattle to other countries, by the end of the 90s, they realized that they were becoming a massive global hit. And they wanted to come to Russia. And uh, there was one little problem. They couldn't. Why? Well, because somebody had trademarked Starbucks in Russia for coffee and restaurants. So their problem was not that they couldn't trademark the name here. Their problem was that they couldn't even come and start serving their drinks. They, keep, they couldn't open a single location. And uh, well, the first thing they did is they reached out to the owner of that trademark and try to find a way to resolve this amicably. But for whatever reason, whether they didn't offer enough, whether the owner of that trademark was uh, looking for some other reasons, they couldn't settle, they couldn't get that trademark. And they had to get involved in a huge litigation. And if you were paying attention, that litigation took them seven long years to get that trademark back. And I was involved in that case. I uh, didn't, like I said, I didn't do a lot of work, but I was, I was doing some work on it. And um, uh, one of the things that we had to prove was that Starbucks became a famous mark. And so for seven years, Starbucks, they couldn't start their shops in Russia. Can you imagine how much profit they lost by not being able to serve a single frappuccino in Russia, right? And that, of course, on top of the legal fees, the law firm was happy because the law firm made a lot of money in legal fees. Who wasn't happy, of course, was Starbucks. The owner of that trademark, it eventually, after seven years, was forced to uh, give up the trademark because the Russian courts found that it became famous and that gave Starbucks the loophole to take that brand back. But again, you had to become Starbucks, you had to become a multi-billion dollar corporation to be able to do that. If they didn't become that big, 
they won't have a chance of getting their brand back at all. Because in Russia, like in most countries, it doesn't matter who came up with a brand, it doesn't matter who started it, it doesn't matter who launched it first. What matters is you file the trademark first. In the whole world of countries, very few of them actually allow the courts to look at prior use. The US is one of them, Canada is one of them, there's a few more. Most countries don't care about first use, all they care about who ran to the trademarks office first. But even if you can prove that you were there first, that you have the, the right to the brand, the biggest lesson here is that the simplest way to get your brand, to own your brand, is to get a trademark before somebody else does. You might be able to take it from someone else if they hijack your brand, but every single other option is gonna cost you more money or significantly more money like it was in case of Starbucks. It's gonna cause you a lot of grief, a lot of trouble, because you won't have the certainty that it's gonna go through and you're gonna wait for a lot of time. So every single other option, even if you're right, even if they're wrong, even if you can prove it, it doesn't matter. It's much simpler to just go and file your trademark right away in all the markets where you think you're gonna have enough of a market to enough possibility to build uh, a brand big enough uh, that investing in getting your brand trademark is worth it. Which, our, our rule of thumb is this. First, you file your trademark in your home country right away. That should be one of the first things you do because there's no reason in the world to spend a minute of your life or a dollar out of your pocket building a brand you don't own. The second thing, after you file your, your, your brand in your home country, you look at all the other countries where you are currently making or you're planning to make at least $30,000 a year in revenue. Why? Well, because if, you're, if your brand is helping you make all that revenue, you want to make sure that nobody can stop you from making all that revenue by trademarking your brand there first and then fighting you. The third step is to file your trademarks in all the countries where you have a lot of marketing expenses. Again, our, our number, our magic number is $5,000 a year. If you're spending $5,000 a year running ads to a particular country or maybe you know, giving out flyers or whatever you do to market your brand there, if, if you are spending 5K a year in a certain country, make sure you own your brand there because what's the point of advertising a brand you don't own, right? And the last one is you file your trademark in all the countries if you make physical products you want to make sure you own a trademark in all the countries where you physically manufacture your goods why because again if somebody else trademarks there they can stop you from exporting the things you paid them to build for you because exportation of products that bear a brand is trademark infringement in case somebody else trademarks a brand there so four things to bear in mind Home country, countries that produce a lot of revenue, countries where you have a lot of expenses, and countries where you make stuff. So Starbucks, they learned this the hard way. I can't even imagine how much money they lost on not being able to come to Russia for seven years. I know how much they paid the law firm. I can't give you the exact numbers, but I can just give you a little bit of an idea. It was well in six figures that they paid the lawyers to get this brand back. And uh, that's that's really the bar of the They wanted it so much, they were prepared to spend the money, they were prepared to wait, and now they got it. So, well done Starbucks, you should have done it better. And that's the lesson for every small business owner out there. It's very hard to do what they did. If, if you're like most, Business owners, you won't be able to replicate this, so do things the easy way. Get your brand trademarked as soon as you can, which is basically when you know that what you're building is something you want to spend any time or any money trying to build it. No, that's my lesson for you today. I hope you found this video useful and I uh, hope you learned something. Again, this is not about Russia. This applies to any country. If you're building a business, if you're hoping to make it successful, you gotta make sure you protect your brand.
before it becomes too late. One of the things I say all the time is that before you become big and successful, someone will have trademarked your brand. Might as well be you. And the problem with that, of course, is that you don't know when that's going to happen. And every single other option to getting your brand name back will be harder, more painful, more expensive than just getting your trademark filed before somebody else does. That's the big lesson. Starbucks learned it the hard way. Don't do that to yourself. Again, you don't have to think of just exotic countries like Russia, but start with your home country. Have you trademarked your brand there? Have you trademarked your brand in your main markets? If you haven't, make sure you go to trademarkfactory.com and request your free home with one of our strategy fighters. They'll have to get started, they'll answer all your questions. And that's how you protect your brand with a guaranteed result for a guaranteed budget. Monterey Makeup is our trademark factory. I'll see you in the next video.